Welcome to Revlog, where today we have Catherine with us. This is, I th- is this your first time on here with us? It is, yes. We're so glad. Are, aren't you glad? <laughs> Welcome. Don't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this is, this is a, a wonderful time. And um, I, I, I don't suspect you're going to have nearly the comments from Catherine that you would normally have from this chair. <laughs> right, so. Don't, you know, please have mercy. I'll play <laughs> nice. Yeah, thank you. It's the family ties. There you go. That, that's right. Yeah, we discussed all that. Uh, yeah. We did. Family tree business. Yeah. yeah. You never know where the family trees will cross inside the church. That's very true. I, I, I really, I learn that is very um, true. regularly of connections I didn't know about before. <laughs> so, including a connection here. That's, yeah, uh, there is a connection. So, yes. grateful for that. Don't you see the family I, resemblance? Yeah. <laughs> Many times I've been surprised. Yeah, there, uh, there you go. <laughs> over the course of decades. So. Well, let's uh, so let's get the text. We're, we're in Ephesians five today, um, in the the power of light. Um, it, it's a beautiful uh, metaphor um, that that Ephesians takes us to here. Uh, Brian, help us get started. What was your initial reaction to this text, and maybe even into that metaphor? In the physical universe. Uh, Physicists or cosmologists tell us that uh, photons are what enable us to see. I mean, photons are the basic particles of light. Mm -hmm. And where there are no photons, you you can't see anything. That has no meaning at all. And it's strange to think about that, uh, about something that exists and has... uh, weight and matter but if there were no photons in the universe you, you couldn't see it yeah. and, and so and color would be non-existent oh yeah it, would, it, would, right. it wouldn't have any meaning it wouldn't have any meaning yeah because that's just a reflection of the different wavelengths yeah you know? um and so uh, here we see that wherever there is it and, and connecting back to genesis the the very first let there, thing let that there be God light. spoke that we have record of. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful. Let there be yeah. light, and where there were, there was primordial um, matter. I guess uh, you know, and the spirit of God hovered over the waters right. and all that. Yeah. But there were no, there was no light. Maybe there were no photons at, at that point. At, at any rate, God said, "Let there be light," and so that is. I think that's at least in the background of what we're seeing here yeah. and uh, in the scriptures that, that it's informed by God's first words, mm-hmm. let there be light. And so where, where there is light, there is a direct result of God's um, activity. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that's right. Yeah, and that, that light represents God's activity uh, in all kinds of different ways, um, yeah. including exposing that which is, both good and bad. Right. There's this it, sh- this light that's shed onto existence in the power of God that um, that informs and helps us better understand who He is mm-hmm. and who we are. And it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Catherine, what was your initial reaction here to this text? <laughs> well, thinking about light and life, mm-hmm. and how we can't have life without light. Yeah. And so we're called to walk in light. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking like, (laughs) you know, as Christians and, and walking within the Holy Spirit, we are called to life and new life. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And what kind of life are we living if we're staying in the darkness? Because we need the light to continually grow, to develop. And we're not growing if we're choosing to remain in that darkness. Yeah. Um, no, that's right. And I just picture with you, it's a, it's a great point, um, like a plant that's kept in darkness mm-hmm. that just starts to wither and brown, and, and eventually it just dies, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And, and I think that is part of this analogy here, right? When, when we're not bathed in this light of the Lord, we wither. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great picture. Um, so, Brian, as you 
come to this text? What, what's a question that comes out of it or a question that comes to mind? Uh, oh, by the way, I, I was, I was yeah. thinking of photosynthesis, right? Yeah, there, <laughs> there, there you go, yeah. right? <clears throat> um, chlorophyll and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, do, uh, you know, sometimes I have been <clears throat> afraid to look at something um, because I don't, I don't know that I will, I think what I might see would, would fill me with fear. Yep. Um, it, even as something as simple as if I, if I'm pulling into a tight parking space and I hear a grinding noise, you know, and I, <laughs> I've, I've, do I look? Yeah, do exactly. Look? <laughs> I've gotten out of the car and I've, I've, you know, I just hear very slowly because it's, it's a frightening thing to it me, is, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, if if that little thing is scary, because of I think of the consequences that I'm gonna have to, you know, right. pay a lot of money to uh, fix a car, or, you know, whatever. And uh, if that um, incident, kind of incident, it, I, I don't want to see it. I mean, there are, there are much grander things that are hard to look at. Yeah. Um, staying where I am is. Um, it feels safer to me often. And looking at something and seeing it, I'm, I might have to, I might, you know, feel um, the strong invitation to rearrange how I'm living. And um, yeah. that's hard. So, uh, What am I afraid of seeing? Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a my great question. question. Yeah, yeah and I, I think you're right to take it. I, th I think the um, most difficult thing for all of us is to self-assess, right? And we know yeah. that when we walk into this light of the Lord, we as individuals are exposed. Mm -hmm. And that's scary, isn't it? Yeah. It's the same thing we do, like, with, uh, often people do with budgets, right? They just don't even want to look mm -hmm. at their, like, personal budget, their okay. bank account. Great. Example. Don't yeah. don't don't want to go to the doctor. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. It's ignorance is bliss. It, ignorance yeah. is bliss, right? We 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 fear what's going to be uncovered, but um, this exposure to the light of the Lord, though it uncovers um, things we don't want uncovered. In that uncovering, the Lord provides healing. Yeah. I mean, the, the Lord is restorative in yeah. that, but it, it's still a fearful process, isn't it? Is. it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Catherine, what question comes to mind for you yes. as we read? Similarly, the the um, we're talking about wake up sleeper. Oh <laughs> yeah, right. Sleep is a precious thing in my yeah. house yeah. right now in yeah. this time, and so that stood out to me. But it made me think: what are the parts of my life that I just am allowing to slumber? Yeah that are causing me to remain in ignorance mm -hmm. that I'm not allowing the light to see, yeah. you know, cause when we're, we're sleeping, you know, obviously we like it to be dark, mm -hmm. you know, we, yeah. it helps us sleep better. But so what are those things that I am just laying dormant in my life so that I can ignore them and not let them see the light of day? Yeah. So I don't grow. Yeah. Yeah. A amen to that. Yeah. There is that, it's that beautiful picture, right? Wake up sleeper, then rise from the dead, um, that we need, mm -hmm. right? And we need to, to process those things in with the Lord. Yeah. I love, love, love that. And we'd love to hear your thoughts, uh, as well. If you would comment below.